Hey everyone, it's Brett Stewart. Today I wanted to do a video addressing audio interfaces and using them with GarageBand. Because that's a question that I get a lot, and I figured that since GarageBand is such a, such a common program, and people are always trying to figure out how to use our audio interfaces with them, I thought I'd make a video about that. So we're going to hop into that really quickly right now. Okay, so first you need your audio interface. I have the Tascam US800. Uh, now, this is a six input interface. You'll notice that I actually have six different volume knobs on it for six different inputs. So, first you need that. Now, every uh, interface is going to usually have a USB output, and your USB output is just going to go straight to your Mac or MacBook or whatever Mac you're using that has GarageBand. So, once it goes in your MacBook, let's talk about what's on the screen. Okay, so when you're on your Mac, first you're going to want to check to make sure your audio interface is indeed working and plugged in. So you can start by just going to your system preferences and loading up the sound tab. Now, if it's working correctly, under input, it should have it listed. Uh, mine is the US 800, so it's listed right there. If it's not listed, you can do a couple of things. You can uh, restart your Mac, and that sometimes happens with task cams, I know, is that you have to restart your Mac. Or you can unplug and replug your interface, and you can kind of like tweak that a little bit. But once it's working, it should pop up right here. So after it's popped up right there, and you know it's working, let's close out of that, and let's enter a GarageBand file. So when we have a GarageBand file, here's just a file I was working on earlier this week. First, we want to go in the GarageBand and then Preferences. Then we want to go to Audio slash MIDI, and we want to make sure that our audio input is set to our interface, and our audio output is set to system settings or whatever output you want. Now, when you first plug in an audio interface, there's a very good chance that it will default the audio output also to your interface, which is really bad because then you won't be able to hear anything. So if you plug it in, you start recording, and you hear the little, you see the little wavelength that so you are indeed recording, but you can't hear it on the playback, it's because this is probably set to your mixer. So start here and first make sure your system settings are like this, then you can close out of that. Then when you're at your uh, screen, say you want to click on a track. Here's my male basic, this is my vocal track. Uh, down here at input source, uh, I have it set to mono 4 because it's recording on the fourth, uh, it's recording on the number four plugin on my interface. Keep in mind, even though it says mono right here, it's still gonna render out stereo. So even though it's recording a mono right there, the full the full recording will be stereo. Um, but you can also use the stereo inputs, I guess, if you want as well. So that's recording on the fourth input because that's what my mic is plugged in for two for vocals. And then on my guitar one, it's plugging into mono three, which is working for uh, my guitar mic. So keep in mind those are both recording at the same time. Now, um, monitoring, you can use it down here, click on and off, or what you can do is you go up to track, and then you can click like, uh, it'll, it'll default like this, so you click show monitoring for real instrument tracks. Once you click that, these will pop up. When you click any of these and they turn yellow, that means that whatever uh, audio playback is currently working, which is probably just your speakers, um, anything that plays on that track will play back through here. So that's really nice if you're using uh, like headphones and you want to be able to hear yourself while you're playing, you plug that in. Keep in mind, if you have too many effects going on a track at one time or you have too much happening in GarageBand, this may be delayed. So many times if you're recording and you want to have this working, you're going to have to record with that on and then go back and do the effects or turn the effects back on, which are done over here because if like you have this on and this on and you've added like a treble reduction you have like a you know Vogel transformer and you have all these things on the left side um, it may not work with those on so you can like test the sound but then you got to make sure that you flip them off at least until you're done recording that way it doesn't um, lag out your monitor that way you're hearing your monitor in real time because it's really hard to record if what you're hearing is two seconds behind what you're playing um, so that's how you monitor and then when you want to uh, multi-track, uh, it'll, it'll start off with it disabled. So you go up to track, and then you go to enable multi-track recording, and then these little dots will pop up. And then when you have all of those red dots clicked, whatever is red will record at the same time. 
So, see now those will record at the same time right there. But if I take off the dot on this one, only that one will continue to record. So, that's how you go about doing that. Um, so in this video, I've pretty much covered um, how to input your interface, how to make sure your interface is working, how to record with it on GarageBand, how to monitor your tracks, and how to do multi-track recording. So that's all I'm going to do for this video right now. If people, if you guys enjoy me doing these screen capture GarageBand tutorials or just in general this type of tutorial, please let me know and I'll be happy to do a couple more, especially for GarageBand. That's kind of my area of expertise. But I also know a couple other programs and I can actually show you guys like, you know, how to cut out, you know, bad audio and that sort of thing. So please let me know if you guys enjoy this type of tutorial and I'll do it more often. So I hope this guy's helped you. I hope this helped you a lot. Um, thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day.